My name is Peter Hurley. I'm a headshot photographer based out of New York City. I created the website Headshot Crew as a place for headshot photographers to hone their craft. So many of my students are kicking ass in their local markets and it means so much to me knowing that I gave them the tools and the knowledge to get where they are. In this series, I'm gonna be traveling around the world to meet some of these photographers on their home turf. This is the Headshot Crew Studio Series. Hey guys, I am so excited to be doing another Headshot Crew Studio Series. This time I am in Chicago with Mike Sansoni at his studio, which is really cool, I must say. Six years? Six years. You've been shooting here six years. Yeah. So let's let's bring it back six years. So so Mike's been with me quite some time. I remember you getting in on the crew and, and starting out. I was super proud of you going from a bunch of miscellaneous jobs to getting to be a full-time uh, photographer specializing in headshot photography. Yeah. Uh, I know you do other things, but I know that you have you know, develop this into something special. So take us back to, you know, where it all started. Well, first of all, how did you find me? I found you. So I went to school for theater initially. Um, and I bought my first camera to make like short skits, short movies and stuff for YouTube with my theater friends. And one of them was like, Oh, you got this nice new camera. You should take headshots for an audition I have coming up. So I was like, okay, shot those. They came out. Okay. Um, then another friend asked me in another one and I was like, all right, well, I'm having fun doing this. Like I should, probably learn about it because like even as an actor I didn't know what made a good headshot or what like the standards were so I hit the school of Google and YouTube and I came across it's all about the jaw of course <laughs> and I was like holy shit there are actual techniques to make people look better in pictures and that's something that I had never even thought about before then I was obsessed and I kept digging into everything I could find of yours and that led me to the PH2 at the time uh, the headshot crew and then I started friend requesting everybody and all the mentors and the associates at the time. And, and here you are. Yeah. So, so tell them, let's, just because this is my favorite part of this whole thing, <laughs> tell them what you were doing as odd jobs before you became a full-time yeah. headshot photographer or portrait photographer. Um, so, yeah, I worked a whole bunch of different places. I, a whole bunch of different Papa John's as a manager. Um, I bopped around to a bunch of different locations. I drove a school bus for a year. And I worked at the Pepperidge Farm Factory. I was a waiter at a handful of restaurants. When did you make the leap to say, I got this. I got my act together. I know I can make an income. I can support myself strictly off photography. When, when was that? That was probably this is the third year now. So three years ago um, when I had moved to the city. So I was living down in the Burbs um, with my friend. And then we moved, I moved back home for a couple of years. And then once I moved from there out to the city, it was at that point where I was making enough shooting and I didn't have to have the restaurant job anymore. My restaurant job became my fun money. Mm -hmm. So that I kind of flip flopped. And once I moved up here to the city, I applied at a couple more restaurant jobs and I went on an interview and I basically got the job and I ended up turning it down because I was like, I, I don't want to do this anymore. And so that was just kind of the point where I was like, all right, I'm going to make this happen. You're making it happen. Yeah. Cool. And now you've shot all sorts of corporations. I know you have a uh, consistent clientele coming through the studio and you travel out to, to shoot yeah. uh, your corporate clients as well. I know that you've been able to secure a lot of corporate work. Mm -hmm. How did you go about doing that? Google. <laughs> Google is my friend. Um, yeah. uh, a lot of stuff when I first started was Thumbtack. And so that's how I got my initial corporate jobs, probably shooting for considerably less than I should have. But that got my feet wet with that. And then I started having a portfolio of those types of shoots to show to potential companies and stuff to be like, yeah, I've done this before. This is what my stuff looks like. But I'd say things haven't really picked off until the past few years uh, now that I am ranking higher on Google and I'm having a steady flow of traffic and stuff. And, and I love your consistency. You put together these uh, shots of the, of the people that you've shot all in one little the grids, you know, yeah. little grid <laughs> with the logo of the company. Uh, do you always do corporate stuff on a gray background? I do, yeah. I try not to shoot anything else if I don't have to. <laughs> Just cause do they ever ask? They do, yeah. And so there are a handful that I've shot white or like environmental, but it's certainly not what I enjoy doing or what I like. So but... you basically created a consistent look mm -hmm. and people come to you for that, which yeah. is a gray background. Do you show these grids off on the uh, in your profile on your website, or is that how do you market those? Yeah, so I added a section on my homepage, and it has a sliding gallery of all those different grids, and 
just says if you want an estimate click the button and you can contact me so I, it is on my website i would say a great majority of people aren't even getting to that part on the page mm -hmm. but if somebody hits me up through like a chat box or something i'm usually sending those just to show them that I can do that or like in the follow-up emails. Every email I send, I try to attach some sort of my work just so that even if they never end up back on my website, they know what it is I do, you know? No, well, that's cool. Take me back though. Take me back to the beginning. What, do you remember the first time that you accepted cash for a job, for a photography job? Yeah. So and it, what was it? It was one of my acting friends for headshots. So it was after I shot two or three people, I think I charged like 50 bucks for the headshots and I shot outside at the time because I didn't know anything. I hadn't found you yet. And so yeah, everything was shot outside. And eventually, once I found you and the, the crew and everything, I started building out my DIY lights. And actually, they're in the, they're in the back. I still have them. <laughs> yeah, and I started shooting inside. But yeah, 50 bucks, I think, is what I cool. started with. Before you, had the, before you got into the studio, how'd you run your business? So I lived with my friend from high school. We had our own apartment and we took out the dining room table and I made that the little shooting space. And so I shot out of my apartment for a very long time. Which actors had no problem. Yeah, well, right. I mean, they did. They <laughs> yeah. did. So Because it was down in the burbs. So people had yeah. to drive or take an hour and a half train to get down there. So it yeah. was not, not busy, but the few people who did, you know, whether it be from a referral or something, they liked it enough to come down, which I thought was pretty cool. And I ended up moving back home and once I was home, I was shooting out of my parents' living room for a while, and then they got sick of me being inside, so then they moved me to the garage. <laughs> and then uh, eventually started sharing with Joel here. So this is your first actual studio space. Yeah. Was it like this? Did Joel have it? Joel, for those of you that don't know, Joel's another uh, associate on the Headshot crew who uh, has been working with me for quite some time, and this is his studio, and you share it with him. Mm -hmm. and. Was it like this? It's a very cool setup. I love the floors yeah. and the, the ceiling and the wall. I mean, it's just really, really an amazing space. Yeah, no, when we first moved in the building, it was, there were a lot of smaller studios. And so the original space was actually only the size of this like middle square. Like it was tiny. Wow. Um, and it was down on the other end of the floor. And we were in there for years. And then eventually the, the building got hit with fire code. And so each of the studios had to have a window for fire safety. And so they started knocking down the walls and making the spaces bigger and kicked a lot of the smaller artists out. And we kind of moved in here. And so why why did you pick portraiture? And why specifically headshots? How did it, obviously you were an actor, <laughs> yeah. so it just kind of made sense, I guess. No, it was you, 100%. <laughs> um, like I said, I was into the film stuff and the acting side. This was not my thing. I was not like, oh, you're gonna be a photographer. No, that, that wasn't it. And so like I said, I started shooting the headshots and I was having fun, came across you and found out what you were charging at the time and that you were booked months in advance. And I'm like, holy shit, this is like, you can do this for a living? Like, that's really cool. So yeah, just started shooting as much as I could and trying to build things up in the meantime. So guys, in the Headshot crew, we have an associate status and that is somebody who gets uh, a portfolio that's consistent of really good solid work. Takes Usually takes people a fairly long time to get there. Once people are at the associate status, do you remember how long it took you to get there? I really don't. I'd have to Do look. Do you remember when you went associate? Yeah, I remember. I remember it happening. Yeah. <laughs> um, probably 14 or 15, 2014 Maybe. or 15, I think. So a couple of years, yeah. a year at least. It's, it's, not, it's a rigorous process. I'm yeah. tough. But the shots have to be good and the people have to re represent the crew well. And this guy represents the, the crew so well um, that there's an actual status that I call mentor sh mentors on the Headshot crew. And these are people that just want to help out f fellow photographers. They're associates who go above and beyond to help their fellow fellow human in the crew. And uh, you've done more than your fair share of that. Uh, you've been a ridiculous force between be, behind helping others get better. And uh, I've heard your name over and over and <laughs> over again that you are inspiring photographers That's as well. Cool. What does your experience of being a Headshot crew member mean to you? Everything. It's my life now. <laughs> like. <laughs> I would not have the life I do now if it, if it were not for the crew and being a headshot photographer. Um, I'd probably still be working, uh, waiting tables or something. I have no idea what I'd be doing, honestly, and I don't really care to think about it, you know? <laughs> yeah, so this is everything. Um, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for you and, and everybody else that I've met through the crew and have helped me get better. So it, you have to pay it back, right? <laughs> um, so I like helping and it's it's interesting now having 
started this for myself. Now I'm trying to get all of my friends that I know to like start their own business and like you can make your own thing happen now. You know, it's pretty cool. It's cool in this day and age you can. Yeah. And you're entrepreneurial. I know that you, we have done, we're doing a studio series with Mike as well. So mm -hmm. Mike Shack and Mike Sansoni work together. Um, and you guys are doing headshot sales and marketing, right? Absolutely. And, uh, you have your email thing going on that we're promoting <laughs> yeah. through the crew. Uh -huh. um, and how has that, how, how'd that come about? And how does that help you generate uh, business? So when I was at the time using Thumbtack to get most of my business, the it was all through their platform. And so you weren't getting, unless they gave it to you, their email or phone number or anything so you could follow up with them. And so I just had that message box back and forth with them. And so I would follow up multiple times. And that was why I think I was so successful on there. It was just that repeated follow up. And then that transitioned into emails. And so once I got people's emails, I could hit them with helpful tips, headshot tips, or just being like, hey, do you still need headshots? And just checking in. And it's it's insane how many people, a year, as I've been running it for over a year, people are booking now that inquired last year. Like, wow. And I don't know that that would have happened otherwise, right. but just staying on top of mind, you know? So explain this this package that you put together for for other photographers to benefit from. Yeah, so it's my email workflow. It's what I use every single day. Um, emails that cover from the time they initially inquire about pricing or working with me, I send a follow-up email. And then from there, every three or four days, I'm hitting them with a headshot tip or something just to stay in their inbox. And then that sequence lasts uh, about a month and a half. And then from there, I lower that down to like every two months and just keep following up. And then eventually they'll book. Once they book, then it's my workflow email. So sending invoices, um, scheduling confirmation and, and getting their proofs and all that kind of stuff, just the general workflow emails. Mm -hmm. And then once I've delivered their images, then it's a follow-up sequence after to ask for reviews, like give me a Google review, Yelp review, and then um, reminder emails that they get return client discount. And hey, come back, it's been a year since we've shot, you should come back and update your headshot. Cool, and you put this all together in a package that people yep. can purchase, where do they go to get it? Headshotcrew.com in the perks section. There we go, <laughs> that's it, that's where it happens. All right, good to know. What about your process of working with people when you're photographing them? And how do you, how is that process? And how has it changed since you first started when you first got a human in front of your camera compared to the way you do it now? Yeah, that's light years. The change has been insane. I remember some of my first sessions, they were like three hours long. And that, thinking about that now, that just sounds awful. <laughs> like, but it's because there's so many different things to remember and trying to get as much as I could from them. And, and the more you do it, like there's one thing it's, you said it all the time. That's get a human being in front of your camera every single day, if you can. And if I could, I wish I could go back and do that more and faster. Um, you get better more quickly. And yeah, after having shot so many people now that that process is a lot faster to get them to that point, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's an evolutionary process uh -huh. is what you're saying. Yes, it certainly <laughs> is. <laughs> of course. How do you feel about the market of headshot photography in Chicago? It's, it's a competitive little market here. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's cool. It's, it's good, I think, that it's competitive because it forces you to continue growing and, and innovating and trying to stay on top of the pack. And that's pretty cool. Um, having fellow crew members, Mike, that is super helpful in itself to be able to compare data with other photographers in your market. And the more you compare, the more you just have a better picture of what the market is doing itself um, so it's cool like he'll get a request or I'll get a request and I'll be like hey did you bid this job and he'll be like yeah and I'm like okay cool what'd you go in at you know and so we can talk about pricing strategies to go at a company and then ideally one of us is going to end up getting it but is there enough to go around oh 100 percent right, yeah there we go <laughs> talk about gear what's your favorite piece of gear that you own right now it's it's the tripod and ball head for sure yeah. <laughs> like that uh what is it it, I use an Enduro tripod and then the Arca PO ball head uh -huh. via your suggestion, and that, that thing is crucial. But yeah, that's, that's probably my favorite piece of gear. I'm not a huge gear guy. Like, mm -hmm. I've, like I said, I started with the DIY stuff, um, and I only bought gear as I thought I absolutely needed it and as I had the money for it. Yeah. So things have kind of progressed, and I've tried a whole bunch of different things, but I still shoot so pretty minimally. So tell about your camera system. I have the new EOS R camera. I love it. It's It's different. It's... It's slightly different than the, like a normal DSLR, but 
I don't know. It's just changed the style of shooting or the way I shoot, and it's it's cool. Yeah, I like it too, a lot. It changed my <laughs> style a lot with that with the autofocus yeah, I yeah. detect. I'm like, whoa! I don't have to recompose. <laughs> this is awesome. Um, what lens do you shoot? Do you have a go-to lens, yeah, the, or what lenses? The one that came with it's the 24 to 105, mm -hmm. and then I'm around 90 millimeters. Uh -huh. um, before that, I was using an 85 prime, and that was I had that lens and a 24 to 70, and those are the only two lenses I've I've had wow. ever. Wow. <laughs> All right. I've been seeing you do more and more portraiture and getting outside your box. Are you having fun with that? I am having fun. Yeah, just trying to figure out kind of what my voice and style is outside of headshots, um, and then just just playing because yeah. I don't. I'm not technical photographer really either. Um, I struggle with strobes and stuff, and so I'm still kind of in the process of learning how all of that works and plays. And so that's really what the portrait stuff is: just figuring out how the gear works and trying to find the style at the same time. You know. Gotcha. What about your most challenging client to date? Do you have a story about a challenge that was just hard to overcome? I think we learn most from our challenges. Absolutely. So the most challenging people are the ones that are most memorable to me. So yeah. I'm hoping you remember yours. Uh, fairly recently, actually. <laughs> um, she had rescheduled a few times, and then she ended up showing, showing up late to the session. She came in. She was obviously flustered, and she was like, do you have a bathroom? And so I pointed her down there and it just so happened at the time this the building I'm in has a lot of different studios and stuff so there, there's lots of stuff happening in here and I I don't never I never know what's happening and at that day there was a like they were practicing a runway show out here in the hall and so they were blasting music and there were a ton of people and making a whole bunch of noise and show she had to go through all of them to get to the bathroom and then when she came back she was like I just, I wasn't expecting this at all, all this, these people and, and this noise. And I'm just, she was like, so like flustered and, and angry. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like we can figure it out. Like just come in and I'm sorry about that. And she like, just, she wouldn't let up. And we ended up like kind of arguing with each other. And she, I was, and I got to the point where I was like, you can leave if you want, you know? And that was the first time that had ever happened for me. You had yeah. talked about it before, but I didn't yeah. think that was going to happen to yeah. have to get to that point. And it is at that point, like, and we're like yelling and you could just feel it in my body. Like I didn't feel good. And then we tried to start shooting again and I would direct her and she's like, I don't want to shoot that side. Like, I know this is my angle. And I'm like, okay, well, that's fine. Well, let's shoot over here then for a little bit. And I'm like, all right, we'll look at the picture. She's like, I hate him. I don't want to look that whole thing. And I was like, I don't know what you want me to do then. Like, if you're not letting me do what I do, you know? So that was probably the toughest I had. What was the outcome? Did she stay? She did. She did stay. She stayed, and I did think she we got pictures? stuff. Did yeah. she pick some stuff? <laughs> she it did. worked out. It did. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. It's sometimes it's going through yeah. the hula hoops to try and get, get the job done. I get it. Yeah. I get it. You've been a headshot crew member for quite some time now. Yeah. Have you gotten jobs off the Find a Photographer search? Yeah, it's super cool to be able to check my email and like to see that an email request will come in and say, oh, that's from the headshot crew. Um, it's something that I probably wouldn't have gotten otherwise had they not found me through the crew. And so that's, it's cool just to have another channel to pick up extra business from. Yeah. Amazing. You are also, were a, a, a big help at Headshot Mania, uh, helping out <laughs> fellow photographers in the yeah. Rumble Room. How was your fun. experience at that's Headshot so cool. Mania? It, it, it's super awesome to see people just starting and you can tell they're overwhelmed with the amount of information and stuff, but how excited they are. And so it's cool to be able to lend a hand and just be like, just help. I don't know. It's cool to help, you know? Yeah. And, and it's a support system that we have. I mean, yeah. f think about the level of support that you had when you first got into the crew and the level of support that our members have now. I mean, it's like, it's, it's amazing, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, to have the amount of associates and mentors that we have now, like, the resources for people, uh, the, the amount of videos that are in there. And I think that's a super untapped section of the site. Like that's worth the membership alone. Like, but yeah, to, to like go back, things have definitely changed and it's super cool to see how things have grown. I get this question all the time. I always get asked what I would say to my former self. So if you could go back and tell the pizza delivery guy <laughs> if what had happened or what not to, what to do or give him any little piece of advice, to help them through this process to becoming who you are today, what would it be? A lot. <laughs> um, like, like I mentioned earlier, I think get more people in front of your camera faster. Just shoot more, more quickly. Um, get that web started. Just the more people you shoot, the more potential referrals you can get. And just growing that web of awareness around yourself. I think that's super important. I would go back and tell myself to 
not fuck with Thumbtack and just work on my website. Um, website has been super, it's a game changer. It wasn't until I started ranking that things started happening for me. I'd say, trust what you're doing. Just just keep going. Like, you're going to get there. It doesn't feel like yeah. it. At the time, no matter where you're at, you never feel like you're going to get where you want to be. And then fast forward and sure enough, you're there if not further. So, like, if, you're, if I were to go back and, like, watching It's All About the Jaw, your video... And if I were to like teleport back there and be like, hey, in a little over five years, you're going to be hanging out with that dude in your studio talking about your headshot business. Like, that's just insane. Super awesome. So you don't think the pizza delivery guy could believe what has happened <laughs> no. at this stage of the game? I don't think so, no. Why don't you do this? Do me a favor. Put your hand up oh, yes. and do it. Pat yourself. There we go. <laughs> there you go. Good job. Mike, it's been a pleasure talking to you. This is a cool space. I know you get a lot of work done here. I have to thank you for all the help you've done for me and for this Headshot crew. <laughs> thank you for everything, awesome. seriously. It's just awesome to have you on board. Thanks. Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs>